Hey, it's the Scotch Test Dummies. Bruno, we're bringing another rye. What is it? Michter's Barrel Strength. Boom! We're going to test it! Let's test it. We are getting ready to do a rye shootout. So we're going to be working more ryes in as we go. And this is a Michter's rye, Scott from Michter's. I was watching you get to wonder if he's going to get that cork out of there. I've lost my strength. <laughs> I've been weakened. Michter's barrel strength rye, very highly regarded. Um, Michter's is an NDP, non-distilling producer. I got a pour you more. I'm trying to get Scott's pour technique down. He can hit like a tenth of an ounce and not spill a drop. Well, sometimes I spill a drop, but oh. yeah, I'm good. You've got well, really good. Give me just a, give me about another shake. <laughs> I'm practicing. Give me a shake in there. I'm, I'm giving you a wisp. There we go. There, there right. we go. See, I'm trying to get it. And You're like a deft hand. Have you bartended? No. All right. Well, that's impressive. What's our ABV on this one? It is high. It is 57. 57? 57.0, 57. right. baby. Uh, Michter's is a non-distilling producer. From what I can find, I know find, what that means, but explain well, they so they're not they're not distilling their own liquid. So they're, they're sourcing, sourcing this. It. Are we thinking Indiana? MVP? No, no, okay. no. Um, best guest on best guest best guest online is maybe a Heaven Hill, hmm. um, maybe the same sources like Pikesville or Rittenhouse, uh, something like that. Okay. And the Chupacabra is back. Chupacabra is back. Okay, we're back. Oh, we, had little, uh, we had an inter interruption. There was an uh, intruder near the premises. What I was saying is, best guess, this is possibly sourced from Heaven Hill or Brown Foreman. Wow. Was the other one I couldn't think Impressive of. Impressive either way you look at it. Yeah. I love the high ABV coming in at 57. And uh, like you said, this has been um, touted. Mm -hmm. We've been told to buy it many, many times. Mm -hmm. And it's fun to say Michter's. Well, and the, the barrel strength they kind of release in, in small batches. So it's kind of, it comes out, like our store gets one, maybe two bottles of it. Mm -hmm. And they'd had it a while back, and I'd seen it sitting on the shelf, and I didn't pick it up. And then when I went back, it was gone. Mm -hmm. You know, that was six months, eight months, a year ago, somewhere in there. So when it showed up again this time, I picked it up before anybody else did. But My tasting notes are two months ago. Two months ago, I had this. Yeah, two and a half. On the nose, I get here that it's light, and I wasn't getting a whole lot of, of depth on the nose. I will mention when this was covered, I got like I, a bigger burst. I did too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, when I sat down and nosed this, um, really just kind of a slight rye on the nose, not a real lot of uh, rye coming out mm -hmm. at you. It was strong and a powerful uh, whiskey. Uh, and I was at the time I was getting more of the bur bourbon, just vanilla and oak smell to it. But when I when I took my topper off here, I definitely got more more rye. It did surprise me though. It's not like you're getting a uh, loaf of rye bread. No. I mean uh, the nose here is a lot lighter and gentler than I expected at this uh, ABV. I can really get my nose down in there. I get hints of vanilla. Mm. I get a musty musk, kind of a muskiness. But the ABV is not even killing me here. I mean, I can get right down in it. Mm. Great Ooh. sweet rye. Very strong. And I took just a little sip. And I was I was going to comment that even I thought 57% was a little light for a barrel strength. I like to see them in the 60s. Mm. Um, but it's pl there's plenty in there. Mm-hmm. Um, really saturates the mouth real good, warming, a sweet rye, neat, it's very smooth, it's very strong, and then I'm also getting those bourbon notes coming out as well, cinnamon, I've got a vanilla cream, a citrus sweetness, sugar, maybe a sugar sweetness, sugar. powdered sugar. Now on the taste, I get the pepper right on the front. Probably the higher IB, ABV. Um, 
I don't get the sweetness that I get in like a, a Sazerac um, or a Rittenhouse. Um, I get a slight musty old oak. So I get a lot more of the wood notes in this rye. And then I get an almond extract. Mm. Yep, I just got an almond about the same time you were saying that. Almond extract. We're going to try a little water. Citrus, I got a citrus zest mm. right there. I did not get any citrus. Well, sometimes with rye, I'll get a definite like an orange zest. Okay. And I, that didn't pop into my mind right away, more just a citrus, almost a, a lemon or a lime zest. Over, a, over an orange. Hmm. Now a drop of water changes the nose on this a lot. I have right in my notes that neat, I couldn't really get much. I have uh, light, can't get much. The drop of water definitely mm. added in a little bit where I'm getting a bit of dill. And you're right, I get a little bit almost like a uh, an orange zest, almost like it's been grated. The orange, not, the, not when you cut off a peel, but a grated orange zest. That citrus is definitely there. Maybe even a lemon citrus. Huh. <clears throat> water changed this up for me. So definitely get at least a drop of water in there. And water to me really made it creamier. Hmm. Um, I'm wondering if I only tried this neat, um, which would surprise me. Usually I'll do the drop. I usually don't do an ice cube with my rice. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of times with my bourbons I might throw an ice in there. You know, I'm 50-50. It might just be water. It might be an ice cube. Hmm. I still don't get a lot of the strong rye notes that I get with other... I, I mean, I got like a bread, rye bread note, nose right there when I, when I took my topper off. But I don't get a lot on the palate. There's not a lot of that strong rye coming out at you. I don't think. To me. Do you get any hint of pineapple on the flavor? Hmm... That citrus pineapple, I, I haven't noted it anywhere. Um, this one, for me, gets a lot better with that drop of water in there. Mm -hmm. A lot better. And it's still, I've loaded just a couple of drops of water, but it's still pretty strong. Mouthfeel. Uh, it coats the mouth real good. I'm even going to add just another drop bring it down. I'm getting, and I haven't gotten this before, a little bit of like grilled pineapple. Um, like if you make a kebab and you've got you've got a little bit of pineapple in between your meat. Wow. I just had Hawaiian pineapple chicken mm. last night. Right, so good. I know what you're talking about, but no, I don't think. there. I mean, maybe it's pineapple. Like I said, there was a citrus that I was getting. Um, I don't know that I would pin it down to pineapple. Mm. But I can see where you'd get that. That's interesting. I'm going to tell you that when I first tasted this two months ago, I wasn't impressed. I, uh, hmm. I, my notes are very generic. I wasn't getting a lot of depth. I'm wondering now if I, usually I will list uh, neat and then I'll list with water and I don't have that on here. And I'm thinking that I may not have tried this with water. But I'm telling you, if you try this, even if you don't use water normally, I would try some water on this. It really, this is one where it varies up. Hmm. Yeah, the nose is more citrusy. The dill's still there. Yeah. Yeah, there, you do get those dill notes. That sour bread, or rye bread notes. A little bit of dill pickle. Yeah, I'm still getting some of the oak. I'm not, I don't really enjoy the, the oaky flavors as much in my bourbons, my scotches, or my ryes. That's interesting. Hmm. I'm scoring this an 85. Still not, I mean, I had this lower before today. So coming back to it a second time, making sure I got the water in there is good. Um, this is not going to be one of my more favorite rye, just for me. I think uh, I do lean toward a sweeter rye, less astringent. This one's a very dry rye. Um, I bet when we do our shootouts and when you get it in there side by side with some others, you'll like it. I'm a he's referenced a shootout. 
Here's what oh, we're no. getting ready to do. Here we go. Yeah. I wanted to do a 10 bottle rye shootout, and <laughs> yeah. I started to get overly excited again. The threat of another throat punch was looming. <laughs> All right. Um, go check out our Lafroig uh, eight bottle. Seven. Seven. Sorry, I just exaggerated. Our seven bottle shootout. Here's what a shootout is. That was is. a little much. It, no, it was, it was beautifulness is what it was. Here's what a shootout is. We try to take something either from the same distillery, same family of whiskey. In this case, it's going to be a bunch of rye, And we'll do a bunch in succession. I get way overexcited at these things. I love them. I think they're unique. When do you get to have such a, uh, a run of something in the same family? However, you said that's too much, and then we had a lot of fans weigh in on one of our live shows saying, what if you did more like a, a Sweet 16, where you, you do a show and you do four, and then you do another show, you do another four, and we pick secretly, we number them or whatever, and whatever wins that set of four of each of the four different shootouts of Rye, that's a lot of filming, by the way, we then do one final. It advances. Yeah, it to advances. The next round. We could either break it in where we're doing a 2-2 two -two or we're doing another round of four and we just pick the winner and that would be, you know, five shows. Mm -hmm. Five or six shows. I like That's the a idea. Lot of rye. It is. I like the idea. I like the idea that it's in the realm of you, which is a little bit more on a weak side. Like your weakness is coming through that you only want to do four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll keep me from getting overexcited. Um, and I like the idea of there being a little, like, Sweet 16 competition in there. Uh, not between us, just that we're secretly numbering. This is my, you know, this is my, uh, my four star, my three star, my two star, my one star. And then whatever bottle comes out ahead advances. I uh, like that. However, what we did talk about, that's a lot of video viewing. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know how we'll fit that in because we are backlogged. Right it's now. probably going to be for it'll be in January, I'm sure. Yeah, it'll be in 2017. Gotta get, we still got a couple rides to get shot, and then like well, I say, maybe there'll be special editions. Maybe it'll be like a yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Ooh. Thursday release. Wow, that would just be knock impressive. them out. That would be impressive. And right as we move into January 2017, we always do the best of. We'll do a top five uh, scotches of 2016 that'll be what we've tried so we're not judging the entire world just the bottles we've had we'll do a top five american uh i think we'll do a bourbon and then we'll do i think we're gonna have enough done to do a top five rye i love the top five you lost me in there somewhere dude you were rambling seriously how's Sorry. it going well, we do top five. What fives. were you talking about? Remember, we've done a top five scotches, a top yeah. five bourbons, and we're going to do a top five rye. I lost you. Yeah. If I've lost you out there, I apologize. You probably didn't lose them. You just lost me. Goodness. Well, you haven't had much sleep. <laughs> so, are you ready? Um, is it worth it? Oh, I was about ready to scream scotch at no. <laughs> I know you was. You're always advancing. I'm advancing. Well, you, you just go here. Well, I get what? nervous. You pressure me, and then I just want to yell out. I like, I like just. I like turtles. Yeah, I like turtles. It's like Pavlov's <laughs> dog. Ding, scotch at you, scotch gods. And then it's over, and you're like, uh-uh, uh-uh. Is it worth it? No, I don't have my, I'm, I'm pretty sure this was 50, 55, 50 to $60 range. I'm pretty sure. It's worth it at that higher ABV. It's just not my rye. I will not go buy any of this for myself. There's other ryes. I lean toward a sweet rye that are m about half the cost. So I think it's yeah. worth it, but not to me personally. Yes, I think it is. Now I just realized, too, you got to go on your score. You never let me address mine. So I had a 92. Holy. Yeah, what? You, and see, you started going. Wow. And then you were... And then the rye shootout, and then the top five bourbons, and the top five scotches. Did you want to throw punch me there? <laughs> this was supposed to be. So anyway, I gave it a nice. I like it. This is. I think it's. A, uh, I think the online reviews are, are on par. Um, I think it's a good a good rye, and I think when you get it in there next to some of the others, you'll see it. Okay. I mean, you gave it a ninety-two. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> wow. Yeah, I mean, I've uh, I've seen a lot of reviews hold this in high regard, and uh, so I'm the outlier here. Um, I'm definitely the outlier. 
Um, I I look forward to meeting you again. Now wait, uh, cousin Shane was over and you let him try it. What he think? You remember? Yeah, he liked. He had a couple. He actually said, "I like that Mictors up there." Yeah. And I said, "Keep drinking it. It's Scots." <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. That's not mine. Yeah, come on, stay away from the Sazerac. <laughs> Continue drinking the Mictors. So, you got here like a, that's Bruno Shelf, the top one. Just yeah. take anything off of that. Anything one up there. you want to drink up there, double. <laughs> Three fingers. That's how much you want to pour. No, he was over for a board game event. Should I go on? No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now you're ready. Scotch it, you Scotch gods. So on to dummies. <laughs>